So you have this patient at your hand who's basically complaining of a decrease in the vision uh, or a decrease in the visual acuity, which is basically gradual in onset. And again, the central portions were affected. And then finally, the uh, peripheral portions were also affected. So this is a particular picture of the cataract in a patient. Usually these patients are senile. Usually they are diabetic or they are suffering from some sort of syndromes. Now, when you are particularly looking Looking at this uh, complete clinical picture, you're going to focus on the signs and symptomatologies uh, just to diagnose what sort of a cataract that the patient is suffering from. What is the stage of the cataract is again very important. When we say the staging of the cataract, we basically mean the classification or referring to the classification uh, in which we basically classify the cataracts depending upon their maturity. It can be um, an immature, a mature cataract. On the other hand, we have the hypermature varieties and we have the more gangan varieties. So depending upon the uh, type of the cataract that we are dealing, again, we have the morphological classification as well. Knowing these classifications, they are clinically significant because the treatment is going to lie upon this diagnosis, the treatment is going to lie upon this types of the cataract that we are dealing with. If it's a nuclear cataract, the management is going to be different from a uh, the management of a cortical cataract. If it is a mature cataract, the management is going to differ from the management of a um, immature or a hypermature or a Morganian cataract. So these are the management guidelines that we have to keep in mind. Again, the aim of the uh, surgery or performing these surgeries in the cataract patients, although they are the old age patients, why, why do we need to perform these surgeries? Uh, it is affecting their work, it is affecting their daily lifestyle because sometimes the visual acuity is decreased to the level of the hand moments or uh, the glare is causing a lot of problem to these patients. To, to, so basically to improve the quality of life of the patient, to increase the mobility and to basically allay that fear uh, that, the, that the person is going to go blind. <clears throat> These are the particular aims or the objectives uh, for the performing these particular surgeries in the patients of the cataract. So we have to keep in mind uh, that the mainstay behind the formation of these cataract surgeries uh, is the improvisation of these lifestyle changes um, in these patients over here. So the clinical features again are very important. Knowing the past medical history is also very important. The past medical as well as the past surgical history um, is very important over here. Why do we need this? Because uh, if the patient has undergone any recent trauma that is going to relate towards the formation of the cataract in that particular patient. So one should know uh, what kind and what sort of a cataract one is dealing with and what are the causative factors towards the development of this cataract uh, in, the, in this particular patient whether it is the age, whether it is the systemic diseases, for example, diabetes mellitus um, in this particular instance. As well as we have the other modalities that are basically relating towards the surgical causes of these uh, cataract extractions. Now over here, it can be the intracapsular cataract extractions. We have the extracapsular cataract extractions. The intracapsular cataract extractions are basically obsolete these days and they're not performed, but in some cases we perform the extracapsular uh, cataract extractions for some of the patients. Then we we have the treatment modalities in which there is an early diagnosis of the cataract in the patient. So we have these um, verifications for the phaco emulsifications or the indications for the phaco emulsifications. What basically happens over here is uh, it's the uh, newer techniques that are devised these days and basically relates towards the use of the laser technologies that can be modified uh, to the development or the towards the treatment modalities that can be inculcated in the treatment of the um, uh, cataract surgeries in the patients. Uh, the, uh, the results of these phaco emulsifications are amazing in the patients. Uh, so it's usually preferable to perform these phaco emulsification techniques in the patients. 
Now, just having an overlook towards the intracapsular cataract extraction, it involves the extraction of the entire lens. So, including the posterior capsule and as well as the zonules of the lens, the surgery of choice if there is markedly subluxated lens or dislocated lens replaced by the extracapsular cataract extraction. So, this is the um, a technique that was used in the past. Basically, it involves the uh, treatment for the subluxated kind of lenses. The steps that are included over here, the eyes with a cataract over here, you can see uh, the incision is given right over here. The lens implant is just put aside. The disease lens is post pulled out and the incision is given. This is the cornea, this is the iris. The implant is inserted. It's basically the lens implant. It's an artificial lens. Uh, that is basically, um, it's the prosthesis that is used in these uh, surgeries. The lens is implanted into position and that now the newer lens, which is uh, replacing the opacified old lens, uh, is placed over here in these kind of techniques. Then we have the extra capsular cataract extractions. Um, what what are the steps for these surgeries? Uh, five to six millimeters incision where the cornea meets the sclera. So it's the joining point and there we give the incision just to reach uh, the lens, another small incision into the front portion of the lens capsule. The lens is removed along with any remaining lens material and an IOL, IOL is basically an abbreviation towards the intraocular lens, may then be placed inside the lens capsule, which is basically a prosthetic lens is replacing the uh, natural or the lens which was opacified previously. So this is the complete procedure for the extracapsular cataract extraction over here. Now, what are the complications that are relating towards these surgical procedures? It is the endophthalmitis. That is one of the uh, complications that is seen over here. And then we have the cystoid macular edema that is observed in a lot of uh, patients. After these surgeries are performed, we have corneal edema. That is the inflammation of the cornea. Uh, that is seen, we have the hyphemas in which there is the new vessels are basically formed at the junction of the incision. So the retinal detachment is observed in a lot of patients. Um, then we have the newer modern techniques which, uh, which were to avoid the complications of the major surgeries that were performed previously, knowing the fecal emulsification, two small incisions where the cornea meets the sclera. A circular opening is created on the lens capsule as well. So a small phaco probe is inserted into the eye just to um, cut the uh, broke, break the lens into small pieces over here. As you can see, the lens is broken into small pieces and then it is removed. This is the cataract. It is broken down into the smaller pieces and then this is the ultrasound or the ultrasonic probe uh, that is used to suck out these broken materials from here and an artificial lens is then improvised inside or placed inside. So this is much a better technique. The prognosis over here in this technique is quite better um, as compared to the other surgical techniques that were devised previously. Sound waves are used to break the cataract into small pieces. Sometimes laser is used to, in these particular cases, the cataract and the lens pieces are removed from the eye using the suction method. An intraocular lens implant may then be placed inside the lens capsule. Usually incisions seal themselves without stitches. So even sometimes stitches are not used and it's a self-healing surgical procedure. So these are some of the advantages uh, which are basically making the infections, the end of thalmite or the other infections that were used uh, that were usually seen with the other surgical procedures are not quite commonly seen uh, by this method. This is a comparison between the different techniques um, uh, for that, that are used for the treatment of the cataract, ranging from the intracellular cataract extraction. The indications are the weak zonules. The advantages are there is no risk of secondary cataract. Uh, little equipment is needed over here. The disadvantages of this method are the high risk of the vitreous loss. That is almost 20% of the vitreous uh, is lost in this technique. Um, astigmatism is one of the complication, delayed visual rehabilitation, and AC or a sutured 
IOL that is sometimes there is a need for the stitches so these are some of the disadvantages or the complications of this intracellular cataract intracapsular cataract extraction on the other hand we have the extra capsular cataract extraction a very hard lens is used poor corneal endothelium and the advantages for this method are the least equipment is needed easy on corneal endothelium posterior chamber intraocular lens now disadvantages are the astigmatism uh, delayed visual rehabilitation so these are some of the disadvantages of this method Talking about the FACO, uh, most cataracts are the treatment, uh, the treatment or the indication uh, for the FACO emulsification. Advantages are the fast visual rehabilitation, and the disadvantages over here are the expensive instrumentation. Ultrasound can be hard on cornea, endothelium. Then we have the other laser techniques that are used these days. The weeks on use during vitrectomy, okay if the lens goes south, an expensive instrumentation is being used in this technique. May lose the capsule or the anterior chamber or the saturated intraocular lenses are sometimes seen at the end of this method or are seen as a complication after uh, this method has been devised. So in this particular section, we just focused on the different treatment modalities that are being devised for the treatment of the cataract extraction. Uh, usually it's the surgical techniques that are devised uh, these days. The most modern techniques, they involve the use of the lasers or which are also known as the FACO emulsifications, which are the new mainstays of the techniques uh, these days. So that is the end of this section. Thank you for watching Scaria.com.